is up tube. So, Peach Throat Passion, it is on the rise. I wanna keep the good content coming. I wanna keep some facts coming to you guys. Today I'm making a video about diet and you know a good regimen to keep your animal healthy. What to look for in your animal's body structure. That's a good sign of health. Some things to do to keep your animal moving and on the rise and keep it active and keep the metabolism working and keep it healthy and keep that blood flowing and you know make sure all of its organs are working and it's not just staying stagnant in its cage. So let's get into this video. Diet, body structure, and how to keep your peach throat in tip top shape. Let's do it. All right, you guys. So monitor diet is very important. I see a lot of people on the internet that are using, they like to use pinky mice and small mice and rodents and stuff. And you know, interior, what's up, bud? What are you doing? Out, I know people think that that's good. And you know, that once in a while, if you have a female that's cycling, you can throw her a couple mice, throw her a couple pinkies, give her a little boost. Look at this guy. This dude is in straight up food mode. This is why you always tuck your fingers in, like this. So, I'm gonna just talk like this for a minute. Um, yeah, you see a lot of people feed the mice. You guys, it's really not healthy. These animals do not eat a lot of mice out in the wild. Peach, peach throats specifically out there on these islands. Uh, Chris Applin of uh, Rare Reptiles. You guys need to follow his page. He does a lot of exploring out these on these islands out there in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia looking for the tree monitors. And while he's out there on all of his adventures, he has witnessed and encountered all these peach throats foraging for small land crabs, similar to fiddler crabs here in North America. There are small crustacean that are out there. He said he's found them on all the islands out there. And, um, get down, bud, get down. No, no, no. Gotta have the interior bloopers. And he says he's found them out there on all these islands. And you guys, these things live on these little crustaceans, hunting around all day, foraging through the leaf litter, foraging through the fallen logs, all of that stuff, he says that he's found these little fiddler crabs, you know, in the uh, climbing up the trees off the ground. So not only are they out there eating tons of different insects and maybe little snakes and worms and little bugs in the ground, centipedes, all kinds of little stuff that they could forage on, these things are eating tons of crustaceans. So that's why I love to feed, you know, chopped up prawns and shrimp and any kind of stuff like that I can get my hands on. Me and a couple buddies have talked about getting some fiddler crabs and maybe trying to freeze them for a long period of time and offering those up. I got a teary crawl on the top of this cage right now. What are you doing, boy? Let's get some food so we can get a hold of this guy right now. But, you know, you just don't want to feed a lot of mice. You want to keep it more on the insect crustacean side of things of the diet. I also like to feed a lot of quail because they're a lean protein item. You know, they got, they do have all the calcium and whatever oils and minerals would be in the feathers and stuff like that and in the quills. So these are a great source of food for these lizards. And the teary already knows what's up. Knocking down the little temp mod there. But not only is diet important, exercise is super important. You wanna give your monitor something, a, a task before he gets its meal. You know, you wanna have him out there searching, running around. You know, if you can, if you have a space like a room that's dedicated to your lizards or an area that's dedicated to your lizards, feed them outside of the cage or make them run outside of the cage and do some tricks and do some things before you then lure them back into the cage with the food and feed them back in there. It gets their blood pumping, it gets their organs moving, so that way when they do eat their meal, they can digest it better, and they're not just sitting in there with a belly sit of uh, with a, a meal in their belly sitting in their organs, you know, not doing much. That's not healthy at all for your lizard. And it, that's when they get the fat stored up and you see all these fatty lizards. And a good sign, that's what I wanted to, another thing I wanted to get into was body structure and how you could tell if you are keeping your lizard in a healthy form. 
So I'm going to try to show that here with Nateri. He's a little wound up right now, as you can see. But these lizards have a good way of showing you if they're in good health. They have these lateral folds and lateral, we call them lateral lines. And a good sign of health is when your bo their bodies, their muscle tone is full, their tails are good and beefy at the base, and their stomachs and their mid body are nice and lean with one to one and a half lateral lines going all the way down between the, the front leg to the hind leg right here. So let me see if I can get Nateri in here and we'll go ahead and see if we can show you that close up right here. Come here, bud. Jesus, this dude is so fast. Hey, up here. Okay, 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 okay. Come here. Well, you got that meal in your mouth. So, let's see if we can slow him down for a second here. But, but you do not cooperate at all. Right in this area, they'll, you want to see a good fold in their body skin. That's indicating that they don't have a, their body isn't fully expanded. Because when their body's fully expanded, that means their belly's full, their gut's full, everything's full. You do not want that. They're never like that in the wild. They're never walking around with a gut full. If they are, they may have stumbled on upon a mother load of food item and they gorge themselves. And then after that, they work it off, they bake it off in the sun while they're basking, and then they're back to foraging. So, you really want to keep those lateral lines. That is a good sign of health. Another sign of health is not seeing their hip bones and their lower back. You want it to be, you know, you, you can see the tops of the points and the ridges that go down. There's usually like two ridges, and you want to see a nice tail base. You don't want to see any folds. You don't want to see any of that in the skin. That's signs of dehydration. So you really want to keep, as much as I say you want to see the folds right here, you don't want to see a bunch of folds in the tail of your lizard. That's signs of dehydration. So know your folds, I guess. But it's not really hard to keep your lizard in good health, you guys. People overfeed them way too much. If you're going to feed your lizard, chop up your food item into smaller chunks and make it an exercise. Make it a, a whole adventure. To where it's not just you feeding it one prey item in its enclosure you're actually working this lizard around and giving it one small item they don't eat these giant items in the wild you guys they eat little tiny prey items that they're foraging around in the leaf litter for and that's why they have these sharp claws and these tongues that are you know basically metal detectors for insects and prey items so Think about the natural history and what would go on in the wild. Look up Rare Reptiles. He goes on all these awesome adventures. He's been on Paul's Monitor's podcast where he talks about some of this cool stuff that he's witnessed out in the wild. So there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, everyone hears the word research and they think you got to go to the library and get a book. I am dyslexic as it gets. It's so hard for me to read. I have to read something three or four times like a page or a paragraph, I have to read it three or four times before I even get it right and then understand it. So for me to read, it is absolutely hard. So doing research for me is like talk, reaching out to people and you know having them tell me experiences or listening to them on a podcast or watching a video that they did on an adventure or you know just following what they are doing. What are they doing in their day to day life? You know that is you're researching their lifestyle, which what or their passion, which is your passion. So you never know what you can learn from somebody. There's tons of ways to do things in this modern day and age. So keep your mind open, keep everything rolling. Let's get on to this next little step. All right, guys. So I want to talk about baby diet. Feeding your baby monitor is super important. These, at this stage in size, these things are pri <laughs> they're primarily chewing on human flesh. It's their main diet. That's why he's sniffing me so intently. I want him to bite my skin. No, so these things are hugely insectivorous at this size. You know, I did say that there's tons of those, uh, you know, small crustacean and land crabs on their islands that they occur on. So you already know that there's probably small, tiny little crab babies that these things are foraging and grabbing on. Look at, look at him. You can smell the other monitor and the food that he had on my shoulder. Oh God, I'm gonna bite my ear. 
Bite my finger instead, please. Ow! Like I said, they survive on human flesh. Okay. Anyways, feeding your baby monitor needs to be an exercise for them every day in their cage because they're most likely, if you don't have their cage set up right, they're gonna be hiding a lot of the time and they're gonna need that exercise when you're not around and they feel safe to come out. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep spinning in circles here. Okay, so um, I do feed a ton and ton of crickets and small roaches to these baby monitors, baby peach throat monitors, but I also, love to chop up uh, shrimp into small tiny little chunks and when it's in tiny little chunks I will hide it in different locations in the enclosure so that when the monitor is out exploring you know they can basically forage for little small chunks of crustacean like it would in the wild this thing is so heated up right now it's so fast I know it's trying to jump on this other enclosure sorry for all of this but yeah you want to be giving your lizard the adventure and the opportunity to exercise while it's going for its prey. Okay, 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 okay. You see how wicked they are when they're heated up. You got to give that thing an opportunity to get that energy out. You know it's in there probably losing its mind if you're not giving it something to hunt. If you're just tong feeding it, then it's got nothing to do. So feeding it crickets, feeding it the small roaches and stuff, super ideal these things are like i said hugely insectivorous when they're smaller and dusting your crickets with the minerals and the calcium super important as well you guys have got to remember to do that it's good for them especially if you're not providing the right lighting lighting is major i see these things use their lights as a routine every day and you know it's awesome it's you can tell that they just they they click with their surroundings they learn their areas and they know what's safe and how they can survive so watching them learn their enclosures and figuring their stuff out is awesome but diet is the main thing that we're trying to talk about today and babies you want to do tons of small little chopped up chunks of crustacean or in insects that's basically i'm not a huge fan of feeding them pinkies and stuff you see people feeding their babies pinkies you guys a pinky is a bag of flesh with juice that is not giving your you might as well i don't it's not doing anything for your lizard, you guys. I, it's not doing anything for anything. The only reason we use pinkies is because animals are so small and that's what's readily available. So just remember that. It's not a good thing to use. You're way better off um, feeding your crickets for one to two days, a ton of carrots, dandelion leaves, spinach leaves. Uh, they have high calcium cricket feed that you can mix in and all of that. And feed your crickets full of that so they're gut loaded with good natural organic material and then feed your lizard. You're giving your lizard all it needs and that's when you get the good healthy colors and body tone and activity and that's why I'm able to do all this cool stuff with this little lizard. It's healthy, it's happy, it's getting a good diet and it's getting the chance to be active and you know turning me into a ballerina while I try to make a video about dieting. So yeah, let's get going. All right, you guys know I love to ramble in my videos, so I'm gonna just throw off a hot list really quick of everything that I think is a good approved item to feed your peach stone monitors. We'll start with the insects and I'll make my way down to the bigger full prey items. So, insects, I think you should definitely feed crickets, grasshoppers, roaches of any sort. I know there's laws and restrictions in some areas. If you can get them, Dude, people feed stick bugs and cicadas and stuff like that. If you can get stuff like that, um, sorry, I said cicadas, katydids. If you can get insects and stuff like that, that is a big meaty protein item for your, um, for your monitor lizard in the form of an insect. That is always good. Any sort of prawn, shrimp, any sort of crustacean like that, if you guys can get it, I'm looking into some sort of crab. I know you can get crabs and stuff from Asian markets. I just don't know about all the parasites and stuff. So freezing them is always gonna be recommended. So I'm gonna look more into that. But I always go with the shrimp and I always go with the prawns and stuff when they're available. Chopping those up into small chunks and hiding them around or feeding them as a tong item, you know, making them work for it. Um, every once in a while, you can feed the chicken hearts and chopped chicken liver and stuff like that. 
it's a good it's a good high mineral nutrients item there's not bone or not calcium to it so i don't like to feed that a lot it's more of like a treat um once you get to more full prey items fish if you guys feed fish i see a lot of people feeding the tilapia fillets there's tons of og monitor guys out there that'll tell you the same thing i'm about to tell you that is the absolute worst thing you could give your monitor. Not only is it processed and there's nothing good about it, tilapia is a filter fish for human feces that is then packaged up and sold back to us, but it has got the scales removed, the bones removed, and all the other stuff removed. So you're basically feeding your monitor mush and then it then squirts it all over the enclosure for you to clean up and it's always stinky and it's always gross. So if you're gonna feed fish, always feed whole fish, smaller fish, smaller silver sides. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a fish that my buddy told me to get that he gets from Publix. He has to ask for them, but you can get a good little bulk, um, bulk size of them. They're about that big and about that skinny. Um, kind of look like little sardine-ish things. If, you can, if you're gonna feed fish, I would highly recommend that. Or if you catch your own wild fish and you could chop it up and quarter it up, that's always going to be great. Your animals are going to love that. Um, quail legs, chicken eggs. If you guys hard or soft boil those, it's a lot less messy and your animals get a lot more out of it rather than if they were to just crack the egg and all the juice falls everywhere, kind of gets stinky and nasty in the closure. Hard or soft boil it. It gives the content a little body and it gives them a chance to get all the egg. So that's always good. Always leave the shell on. That is a huge part of nutrients that they need to intake. Um, quail in general are an awesome prey item. If the quail is big you, and the lizard's small, you can chop it up and quarter it up into small pieces and feed it like that. They'll absolutely devour it. Um, just a, hu a huge variety of stuff you can feed them, you guys. Like I said, I'm not a huge proponent of mice. Like I said, if you have a cycling female or an animal that's super lean, just got imported and it looks like it's about to die, you know, maybe throw it a mice as a little boost or something, but they are not out eating mice in the wild like that. They're eating more of a crustacean insect based diet with a, every once in a while you get that little fine, you know, you find that snake or you find that little there, they, I mean, obviously there is wild rodents out in the wild. So, hey, you might stumble upon the little pouch or the little nest with the little babies in it all wrapped up in there. But, you know, that it's not really going to happen all every day and all the time. So just being smart about what you do, what you feed them, how you feed them, giving them exercise, you know, just think, you guys, what would this thing be doing in the wild? How would it be operating? And can we replicate that here? Because if we can... We're going to get nothing but good results and we're going to have nothing but longevity with these animals and that's the goal personally for me if my lizards don't live to be 20 years old i'm going to feel like a failure some people will be like dude that's an impossible feat you should never have that expectation well guess what i live with high expectations and that's my expectation so 20 years are better for me with these lizards i'm going for it whatever it takes i'm going to do it so hope you guys got some good information from this hit up the peach throat passion page um, any questions? I love talking to you guys. I need more peach throat people to hit up the page. Let's do some collaborations. It was not meant to be a page based on solely my collection. I wanted it to be a community thing. Get all the Jobiensis people in America, in the world, connected, talking about our experiences, what we've learned, what we can, you know, be better at, and how we can grow. You know, what are we people seeing in the wild with these things? I know they're just a bush lizard over there, but these things are the most beautiful bush lizard you're ever going to see in your life. So, hit me up. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Hope you got something out of it. I'll see you in the next video.